so I've been working on this project called Saffron and it has a website which you can see here and a app as well now the website is made with react while the app is made with react native but there's a lot of things that the user is going to do the same thing in both places so for example a user can rename their cookbook in the app and we also have a place on the website where you can rename a cookbook now I didn't want to duplicate the code that I use in both of these places because it's virtually the same thing now the UI may look a little different but at the end we're making an API call and the API call is the same and so what I ended up doing is setting up a shared package that both of these um, use and so they don't have to duplicate the code to say rename a cookbook or any of the other actions that need to happen. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I go about sharing code between a React project and a React Native app. So to start off with, one of the first tools that I use is called Yarn Workspaces. This allows you to actually interface or share code between your app and your website. Now, before I get into how exactly this works or what it looks like, I want to just mention that with React Native, it is a little tricky to configure these. And one of the reasons for that is because symlinks are not supported yet. There is a pull request for them, um, but it's been open since 2018. I know the React Native team has said that they're going to add this, um, but I have no idea when it's going to be added. Um, and until then, it's a little hacky to actually get Yarn Workspaces to work. So with Expo, um, or I'm using Expo, so one of the ways you can get it to work is with this package called Expo Yarn Workspaces, and they have a readme walking you through how you can get it working. Now if you use React Native CLI for your project, um, I'm not exactly sure how you actually get it working. Um, I do know of an open source project though that has it working, so if you are interested in setting that up, I would recommend taking a look at how DevHub does their stuff. And I'll link this below. This is an open source project that has uh, Yarn Workspaces and React Native working correctly. Now, I've been using Expo, so that's what I have an example of here that I'm going to be showing you. So, how it works is I have one folder which I put all of my uh, React Native code, and I call it app. And then I have all my code that's the React project, which I call web, and this over here. And so I put all these things in a folder called packages. And so I can have as many of these as I want and I can share code between them. And the code that I'm sharing between them is in this folder called controllers. And so I have some code in here. And what I mean by code is I have some functions, some hooks, and these functions and hooks can be used across my React and React Native project. So let's see exactly what I can share. So first off, I can share functions. So this is an example function that I use to just validate URLs that the user gives me. Um, so this is main purpose is to pre prevent uh, XSS. And so you can share functions like this or whatever type of functions you want across both of your projects. And so you don't have to duplicate any kind of domain logic you have in your project between those two places. Uh, this is a really nice thing that you can do now with hooks. Um, in React, it's made it very easy to be able to share uh, state logic between React and React Native. So for example, here's a hook, and you can make these hooks where they're agnostic to both platforms. And so this is a hook that I use called usePrevious, which just tells you the previous value of a variable um, or a state value. Um, and you can see I'm just using useEffect and useRef, which are hooks. And so you can build your own custom hooks and share those uh, between them, uh, between the different projects. And so I just export it from this controllers package. Um, and then what I can do is in my, for example, my app, I can have as a dependency one of my packages. So I call this package gg slash controllers. And so I have that as a dependency. And then I can just import um, from at gg slash controllers and I can import different functions and hooks and all that fun stuff. Now, I don't tend to do too many um, do, like functions like this or just random hooks like this. I would say 
I do have some of them, but the majority of the code that I'm sharing has to do with API calls. So I'm using GraphQL for that. And so what I end up doing is I share a lot of Apollo hooks. So I'm going to show you exactly the setup that I do to actually share between these. So the first thing that I do is I actually have all my queries and mutations, uh, the GraphQL code written out in this shared package. So for example, here's a query. Here's another mutation over here. So I would put all of my stuff in the shared package. And then what I do is I use this library called GraphQL Code Generator. So if you haven't heard of this, I highly recommend it. It's a package that can take your queries and your mutations, and it's going to generate hooks for you. It can also generate components and higher order components, but I'm on the hooks train, and so I'm using hooks all the way. And it's also going to make it compatible with TypeScript, so you have type safety. And so it is super awesome. It generates all this code for you, and you don't have to do any of the work. And so I run this. And I can show you the output, but it's just going to look like um, a bunch of nonsense. It's going to give us a whole bunch of um, hooks that we can use uh, in our code. So this generated output is in a folder I call generated and then GraphQL dash hooks. So I just have like a configuration for GraphQL code generator that spits that out for me. And this, as you can see, I am exporting here. So I export my GraphQL hooks. And so now I can access all these generated components from my website and from my React Native app. So let's see what that looks like in action. So here is the React app. And here you can see this is what one of the hooks looks like that I'm using. It's called use books query. And so here I can see that I have data and I wait for the data to load and then I'm displaying a list of books that I get from my API. And I'm also using the create book mutation here, right? And I also have this create book mutation options thing, which I'm going to get into in a second. Um, but these two hooks that I have here, again, I can use this over in my React Native application as well. So you can see here the two hooks again. We're importing it from our shared package that I have. And then I can just use those hooks in my code. So here you can see I'm displaying a flat list. Whereas in my uh, website over here, I was displaying buttons and divs. So the UIs can look totally different. And for my application, they are totally different in a lot of places. But I can still use the hooks that are generated for me, um, no matter what the UI looks like. Because at the end of the day, a lot of times I'm calling the exact same API uh, calls. So this is what I do. And then the last cherry on top thing to uh, complete this whole sharing is a lot of times after a mutation, I need to update things. So just to give you an example, when I create a book, I want to add a book to my books query, right? Because my books, I just create a new book, so it should be in the books query. Uh, or maybe I want to do some optimistic UI. And so the logic that I write to update the Apollo cache and to display optimistic UI, I don't want to write that in both places. Right, so I could say create book here, and when I call this function, I could pass in the optimistic response logic, and I could pass in the update logic. And I could do that for both my app and my website, but a lot of times they're exactly the same. So what I do is I create these functions which I call mutation options, and this is what they look like. And so what the mutation options have inside of them is all the logic that I just discussed. So for example here, you can see I have a optimistic response that I want whenever I create a book. And I also have the logic to update the Apollo cache here. And so I just have these functions, which I pass in the variables. And what it's going to return is the options that I can pass to the mutation function. And so these options just tell Apollo how to update and you know how to do optimistic response and any other things that I want to pass in here. And so now I have it in the shared location and I can just call my mutation options in both my website. So you can see me here calling it and in my app over here. And so now I have this nice little utility here where I now have to 
just call it in wherever area I want to use it and it handles updating the cache for me and I don't have to worry about it in both places. Now yes there's going to be some times where I may want to update different things depending on uh, which device I'm on and for that I'll just you know manually override it and pass in the update function otherwise I use the shared code here um, in most cases and so this is super nice once I create this uh, shared code once I'm now able to just quickly create a bunch of different mutations in the app so what it turns out is once I start building the either a feature for the website or for the app once I finish that um, getting it working for the website um, is pretty easy because I'm really just using or building out the UI for it and then I'm using all the generated components and all the mutation options to update the logic after a mutation is called that I've already created for myself. Uh, so this is a strategy that I'm really liking and it has saved me a bunch of time and just effort because whenever I have to change something I only have to change it in one place now as well. So take a look at this. I'm going to put all this code on GitHub if you want to check it out. Uh, and let me know what you think of this.